Zooey Mama! How's it going, everybody? I'm here today to talk about Namora, the new card coming to Marvel Snap on May 21st. She will be in spotlights alongside Scar and Black Knight. I think this is also the first time Scar has been in spotlights since he was the season pass card back in January. So I'm going to go over Namora, her abilities, good synergies, deck ideas, all that good stuff, and then give my final ratings on if I think she's worth chasing after and buying with your precious resources, or if she might be a bit of a bust and you could skip her and save for next month. So Nomura is a five cost, six powered card with the on reveal ability to give plus five power to each of your cards alone at another location. Now Nomura cannot power up herself or a card on the location that you play her, but if you do have two cards in separate locations and they're the only cards there, she will give each of those plus five, bringing her stat line total to an effective five cost, 16 power card. So let's get into her best synergies. So there are a couple cards you should keep in mind when building a deck with Nomura. First up is a card like Jeff. Jeff is so good for Nomura because you can have him sitting alone in his own location Power him up with Nomura and then move Jeff. Remember that Nomura is an on reveal, okay? It's not an ongoing effect like Miss Marvel. It's just on reveal. So you get to power him up and then you can move him and have him on a lane with other cards on the last turn. Uh, another card that works well is Cosmo. Listen, you're adding power to cards. That makes them prime targets for Shang-Chi or Shadow King, okay? So if you did solo Cosmo in a lane, you could power him up with Nomura, but even more than that, if you are powering up some other cards using Nomura and they're getting to 10 or more power, you could look to play Cosmo on the last turn to stop a Shang-Chi from your opponent. And then lastly, a card like Storm, okay? This can work with like Professor X, something that just shuts down a location because you don't even have to add to her on turn four. Normally you wanna play Storm on turn three. She's flooding her lane. It's gonna close down next turn. So you play your four cost card there as well. Well, with Nomura, you don't have to rush it. You play Storm on turn three. You play four cost card on a different lane that you're now competing for. Turn five, you can play Nomura, power up that Storm. And turn six, you can even like Doctor Doom over into that Storm lane again. Okay, so you have plenty of ways to add power. And what's interesting here, I do not have Namor or Orca on these key synergies because thematically, yeah, those cards work. They like being alone in their own location, but Namora doesn't actually need them, okay? She just wants any card that's alone in its own location. And I think those cards actually go too big. If you're doing Namor, he's gonna be too strong. He's gonna get Shang-Chi right away. It may not be a great idea. So I don't think you need those cards to play Namora. Now let's get into the good, the bad, and the ugly. First up, the good. Again, she's up to a 516, and this is spread across the board. Okay, spread across two lanes, even if she only powers up a card in one lane. Maybe your third lane, you couldn't plan at all, or just had multiple cards from a location, or your opponent did something. Then she's a 511, okay? That's pretty good. Claw just got buffed. He's a 512 spread across two lanes, and he's seen a good amount of play. Okay, so even if she just triggers once, it's good power on the board on turn five. You can obviously have it happen multiple times if you're playing her with Wong or Odin. Again, she is an honor wheel effect. You can keep popping it off as long as cards are alone in their location. Uh, the cards don't need to stay alone afterwards. As I mentioned, this is good for Jeff. You could do it on something like Vision. Maybe you got him out early. Anything that moves, it's nice. You can really just add up a bunch of power and then shift it on the last turn, really surprise your opponent and maybe focus on two lanes while they're fighting for this third one that you just gave up. And then lastly, she doesn't have specific synergy. Like I said, the cards don't need to stay alone. It doesn't need to be with Namor or Orca. You can just hit any card regardless of what kind of card it is as long as it's alone. Now to talk about the bad, and there's some bad that we need to discuss, she needs planning, okay? You can't just play her in every deck. You need to be thinking the whole time. Even if she's not in hand, thinking, okay, if I draw Nomura on turn five, I cannot have multiple lanes stacked with multiple cards, okay? I need to focus one lane, just get one card in each of the other lanes, okay? You have to be thinking about it. This requires planning, and this can get messed up easily. It can be hard to fill other lanes after Nomura, 
So maybe you did it right. You have, you know, one card in the first lane, just one card in the second lane. The third lane, you've got multiple cards. You play Nomura there. She powers up the first and the second lane. Great. But all you did was add five power to the first and the second lane that just have one other card. Well, your opponent might be fighting for those lanes as well. And now your turn six, you need to try and focus all of your cards potentially on those two lanes. Some locations suck. Okay, you're going to see a central park that just had squirrels everywhere. That's going to mess with you. If you can't play in a location like Sanctum Sanctorum, Nomura cannot add power there. You need one card there. I mean, there's just some locations that limit her to a 5.11 or just a 5.6. Some matchups suck. If your opponent is playing Clog, good luck. Okay, you're not getting those bonus points. You're not. If they're playing Debris, you're not getting those bonus points. Even if they're just playing White Widow, that might already take out one of your lanes. So it's going to suck sometimes. And then lastly, Leech is meta right now. Leech comes down on turn four. If you're planning to play Nomura on turn five, you probably have her in hand. And she probably just got Leech. So especially this first week, when people are testing Nomura, we already have Leech in the meta. He's going to be played even more with people trying to counter the Nomura players. Okay, so week one, she's going to suck. Even after that, she might still be kind of weak because there's just tons of Leech out there. Okay, it's a bad time for an on reveal card that comes down on turn five to come into the game. And here's just my friendly reminder that if you have not already, please like this video, give it that thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. We have an amazing community here, and I make a card prediction video for every single new card coming to Marvel Snap. So let's get into Nomura's floor and ceiling. So to start with Nomura's floor, this is her at a reasonable worst. Well, you're gonna have instances where she just can't add any power. Again, it's gonna be because of locations, it's going to be because your opponent's adding stuff to your side of the board. Sometimes the locations may not add stuff to your side, but you may really need to play cards on this location, right? Some locations you need to compete for early. And so you might have to just mess up the synergy yourself and just say, okay, I'm not going to play Nomura. She's just going to sit in my hand as a dead card, a dead 5-6. Uh, this is not viable nor competitive. A 5-6 is just too weak if it's not doing anything. I think you're better just not playing her unless she was literally the only card you could play on turn five. In terms of Nomura ceiling, it's that you do add plus five power to two other cards and they're in locations that are good for them. You didn't have to make difficult choices, you know, putting them on a location that you didn't really want them. So she's effectively just a 516. If you could do this every single game, this is overpowered. This is one more power then Dr. Doom. Dr. Doom is a 615. He adds five power to three locations. Namora would be adding five power to two locations and six power to one location, that being the location that you play Namora herself on. So if you could just do this consistently and there were no hurdles, this would be great. This would be nuts. You would see it all the time. But on average, this is how I see it going down. I think on average, you will be able to get plus five power to two cards. Okay, you could definitely give it just one. Um, if you just had one card soloing a lane, you could definitely do that very, very often and pretty easily. There's few locations that would mess up to where you just wouldn't be able to add any power. But I think you can often actually add plus five power to two cards. But the downside is again, you cannot adjust to locations. You cannot adjust to what your opponent is playing. Dedicating turn five to just adding power and the previous turns you're just putting one card in two lanes okay there's two lanes that just have one card so if it's something like the raft something like white hot room you're just not competing okay or if you do compete you now lose the power so on average i think you can get plus five to two of the cards with Nomura, but i think you have to make sacrifices for it i think it takes away flexibility it gives you limited play lines and that can just be bad because your opponent may be able to adjust to what you're doing and you can't adjust to what they're doing so let's get into three decks that i have crafted for namora this one is an ode to my boy robotussin over on twitch check him out if you haven't already robo is a huge fan of howard the duck he absolutely loves howard and you know what i enjoy howard as well in ongoing decks you do howard alongside iron lad in a deck that just has strong ongoing cards, okay? And here we've got Nomura, 
who's just got good targets. You can have Jeff soloing a lane. You can have Cosmo soloing a lane. If you got Ravana down, maybe you get Professor X on turn four soloing a lane. And you just play Nomura and you power them up. And then on the last turn, you could play Spectrum and power those cards up again. Okay, she'll power up the Professor X, the Cosmo. Even if you did Professor X one lane, Mystique right after in another lane, you're looking good. You've got Claw to add power to other lanes. You've got Mr. Fantastic. Again, Jeff moves over the place. And Iron Lad just has so many good targets here. So I love these types of ongoing decks and ongoing lockdown decks. So I'm definitely excited to try this one out. Next up, I've got Namora in a ramp deck. So I took out White Tiger from this ramp list, which I really enjoy, and I put in Namora. okay? Now, this can work well. Obviously, we're playing Blink in here, so if we do do Electro or Wave on turn three into Blink, she could pull out Leech, Namora, Vision. She could pull out a few different things, okay? But we've got Nebula in here who can sit on her own lane, Jeff who can sit on his own lane temporarily, if you get Nomura out early and you did ramp up, you could do Nomura into Doom, into Odin, and just, you know, get the double Doom bots. Maybe you just do Vision and Doom. I mean, there's just so many good options, and Odin can help you out here, especially if you didn't Doom already. You can just trigger Nomura again with Odin, and that's going to be pretty nice. And last up is probably my wildest Namora deck. This is the On Revealed Cheese combo. Now, luckily, not many people are running Cosmo, so you can get away with some Wong shenanigans. But again, if your opponent has Leech, you're pretty much donezo, okay? But if you avoid Leech, you've got Echo here to actually help stop a Cosmo in your Wong lane. You can sit Colossus in one lane and let's say Storm in another. You could even like Hulkbuster your Colossus. And Colossus is actually really good because he can't be shang chi and he can't be Shadow Kinged, okay, unless you removed his ongoing first. So you'd sit Colossus in one lane, Storm in another, and then just look to play Wong into either White Tiger or Nomura into either Doctor Doom or Odin, okay? So you just get power spread. And again, you're hoping your opponent doesn't have Cosmo or you have Echo to prevent it and you're just hoping you don't get leech okay we've even got captain marvel here to move over at the end but i really like the storm synergy i like the jeff synergy this one's cheesy it's gonna work or it isn't but when it does your opponent's not gonna be able to do much about all this power that you're just slamming down on the board so now let's look at this spotlight week as a whole okay so from may 21st to 28th We've got Nomura, Scar, and Black Knight, and here are the Spotlight variants that will be in the cache if you do already own the card. Now, in terms of token value, they're all 6,000 tokens. This is the best value, okay? And there are some cards dropping down in series soon. These are not them, okay? Scar and Black Knight are staying series 5. They're not dropping down, so all 6,000 tokens is the best token value that you can get from keys. In terms of being competitive, though, I think it's bad. I think it's a bad level. And again, I'm kind of excluding Nomura here because we don't know how she's going to perform. I don't think she's going to be amazing, but I'm really focused on Scar and Black Knight in terms of being competitive because they're just not needed. Uh, if you don't play discard, you literally have no use for Black Knight. If you do play discard, you might have use for Black Knight, but if you're just playing Hella, High Roll, Casino, Discard, then you don't play Black Knight anyways. And Scar just doesn't see much play. He pretty much sees play in a Gunny T's Big Dumb Idiots deck. And I think that's just about it. Okay, he doesn't see much play anywhere else. And he does also get countered by Mobius. So I don't think either of these cards are worth chasing after in terms of competitive play. In terms of variants, I think they're okay. They're not bad. Um, I don't dislike any of these variants, but these cards actually have other good variants. Okay, the Nomura one's fine. I think that one's pretty cool, actually. Uh, the Scar one, it's not bad. He's got kind of this dark, grungy look, but he's got like two or three other variants that are the same style. Okay, same kind of theme where he just looks really kind of dark and horror movie-esque, right? So it, I don't know if this one's the best of those. They, they kind of look similar. And the Black Knight one, I think is fine. But again, he's got a couple other good ones too. So I just, I don't think these are the best for the cards. So I think it's just okay, but art is subjective. You may really love these or really hate these. For me, it's kind of in the middle, but I think it's just okay. Now to give my final ratings on Namora herself. In terms of being fun, she's okay. 
She's not just a simple stat stick. Those cards are boring. When I say simple stat stick, I mean a Red Hulk, a Mockingbird, a Sasquatch who comes out next week. Something that just has like one small condition and you just slap it down and it's power. Nomura, you have to think about, you have to plan for, and that kind of challenge makes a card interesting, right? It gets you thinking, it makes it more fun. So she's better than just a stat stick, just a card like Scar. In terms of being flexible, she's okay. Um, a lot of decks aren't going to want her. If you're trying to play multiple cards each turn, you probably don't like her because you have to keep your lanes relatively empty. You know, two lanes with just one card. Focus, you're playing a third lane and you might have locations that are hard to play on. But she doesn't require specific cards. She can't only hit ongoing or only hit on reveal. You know, she can hit any card as long as it's alone. So it's not terrible. I think it's okay, but a lot of decks are not going to want this as one of their five cost cards. That's a big commitment. You need a deck that does kind of slow play, at least in the early game. In terms of being competitive, I think she's okay. She may be good. She may be good in the decks that she works in, okay? Maybe in like the ramp deck I showed or even the ongoing. She may be good. I think she's likely the worst card of this month. But I'm not saying that because I think she's bad. I'm saying that because... We got some good cards this month. Um, I'm not sure any of them are broken. Blink seems really good. Sasquatch comes out next week. Maybe he's broken. But, you know, I think Nomura, it's it's tough. It's tough being a five-cost card in Marvel Snap. You got to do something crazy like Blink where you basically cheat out a card or cheat out energy. Nomura's not cheating at all. She's just adding power to the board, and she may not add power to the board, right? There's a bit of inconsistency there. So my recommendation is that I don't think Nomura's worth chasing after. Again, she's not a horrible card. If you do get her, I'm sure you will find some success. She will win you some games because she's like a five cost Doctor Doom sometimes. And it's it's gonna feel okay, uh, but I don't think she's crazy. I don't think you just build decks around her all the time. She's not insanely fun, not insanely flexible, and not guaranteed to win, okay? There, there's other big power stuff you can be doing even on turn five, and you're just gonna get hit by Leech. That's gonna feel bad. So, um, I think she's an okay card, but I don't think an okay card that's somewhat competitive is gonna be worth 6,000 tokens or chasing after with small light keys. If you're going after the cash for Scar or Black Knight and you pick her up, then great. But if you're thinking about chasing after just Namora, I would probably skip. Okay, so those are my thoughts on Nomura. Let me know what you think about her, what you think her best combos and synergies are. Let me know in the comments down below. And until then, stay positive. I'll see you next time.